Hi everyone. This video is going to cover demonstration problem 10.2. Um, we're going to be looking at the effect of the product and period costs. This demonstration problem goes along with the problem um, 10-1 and along with the uh, problem 1024B that we did. There's just a few changes in them, so um, pay attention to when we look at depreciation. But we're going to just start with um, we're doing, dealing with our first year of operation, and except for the depreciation adjusting entries, all of them are cash transactions. So we start with our $50,000 cash flow, which they've already done for us. So now we pay $6,800 for the materials that were used to make the products. So all the products were completed during that period. This makes these those raw material um, costs. So we come down to our statements model, and that was 6,800. Comes out of our cash, goes into our inventory, and is going to come out of our cash as well. Oops, 6,800, not 8,000. And that is an operating activity. All right, and remember this is not an expense because it's going into our cost of goods sold at the end because it's an in inventory right now. Number three, we paid salaries of 4,300 to the selling and administrative employees. Remember, selling and administrative employees are not directly tied to the production of the product. So these are our period costs. And that is expensed right away. So we take out our 4,300 in cash. Since it's an expense right away, we take it out of our retained earnings. Again, here's that expense. And it comes out of our cash flow for operating. Number four, we paid wages of 7,200 to production workers. These are our production workers, so these are our direct labor, which means it's a part of the product cost. So this is something that's going to be expensed later in our cost of goods sold. So we've got 7,200 out of cash, since it's gonna be in our cost of goods sold later. We add it into our inventory, and then it's going to come out of our cash flow. And again, 72, not 27. And it's an operating activity. Number five, we are paying $9,000 to buy furniture used in selling and administrative offices. All right, so we know that these are not going to be a part of our um, inventory because they're being used in the selling and administrative offices. But when we look at this, it's furniture that is considered an asset. So this is an asset exchange as well. So we've got $9,000 worth of furniture from cash and it's going to go into our furniture assets column. And again, we're spending that money, so it's still got to come out of our operating activity. Oh, sorry, out of our cash flow. And because we are investing in furniture, this is an investing activity. Because we're investing in something for the company. Number six, uh, we record annual depreciation on the furniture. All right, so the furniture has a $1,000 estimated salvage value and a five year useful life. So we've got to think back to depreciation. We're going to use straight line depreciation because they don't tell us not to. They just say we're going to do it for um, annually. So let's do that 9,000 minus the 1,000. That gives us $8,000 to depreciate. And we are going to depreciate this over five years. So we take that 8,000 then, divide it by five to figure out how much it depreciates each, each year which comes out to be 1,600. 
Now, since this is again furniture, it has nothing to do with our production, so that's going to be a depreciation expense right then. So we know we're taking $1,600 out of the furniture because it's depreciated that much, and then it's going to come out of our retained earnings as well. And it's an expense. All right. So now number seven. On January 1st, we paid $23,000 to buy manufacturing equipment. All right, so this equipment is used in the production of whatever product we are making. So manufacturing equipment, we've got that asset up there, that asset account. So we're going to take $23,000 out of cash. And we're going to put it into our manufacturing manufacturing equipment. Again, this is an asset exchange transaction. And because we have money coming out, it's got to come out of our cash flow. And this is again an investing activity because we are investing in capital equipment. Uh, number eight, now we've got to depreciate the equipment. Um, it has a $3,000 estimated salvage value. So again, we're going to take that 23,000 and we're going to subtract the salvage value, which gives us 20,000. And then it's got a four year useful life. So we depreciate it over four years and we come up with $5,000 per year. Now, this equipment is directly used for our production. OK, so it's a product cost. So when it depreciates, we take it out of the manufacturing, the equipment. And we simply move it over to our inventory because we are going to count that depreciation. As part of our cost of our goods sold when we sell these this merchandise. All right, number nine, we completed 4,000 units of product, determine the cost per unit. So let's start with that. So we're going to start with determining the cost per unit. Well, first thing we've got to do is figure out how much did we spend on our units. So we take our 68, our product costs are the 6,800, the 7,200, and the 5,000. So we've got to add those up. So we'll do that up here. 68, 72. And 5,000. Should be 19,000, I believe. So we spent $19,000 to complete 4,000 units. So cost per unit, 19,000 divided by 4,000. should find that it is $4.75 per unit. Um, now they tell us that the sales price is the, the cost plus 60%. All right, so now we've got to take that 475 times 0.6 to get your 60%. That should be two dollars and eighty five cents. So then when you take four seventy five plus not times. I think my pen just died. Let's try this again. There we go. Plus 285, you should come up with, I believe, 760. All right, so now we sell 3,000 units. So if we're selling 3,000 units, I'm going to put this in blue just so we can make sure we see it. What's our, we want to record the sale of the 3,000 units first. So we're not dealing with the cost of the goods sold. That's on number 10. 
So we want to take that 760 times our 3000. So this is the revenue. This is what we're bringing in. When we do that, we should get 22,800. All right, so we have to go record that down here. So that's our, our revenue. So 22,800. That's also going to go under our retained earnings. Again, that's our revenue. And then we're bringing that in as an operating activity. All right, the last thing, code the recognition of costs of goods sold for those sold in event nine. So that means we got to go back and take that 450 because that's our cost per unit, or 475, excuse me, times the 3,000. And we should end up with 14,250. <clears throat> so that's my cost of goods sold. All right, so then we need to bring it down here. And we are going to take that out of our inventory because we have now sold that inventory. And it goes into, or it also comes out of our um, retain, our retained earnings. Now it's an expense because it's the cost of goods sold. So now we put it on the income statement. And we're not doing any sort of cash exchange here, so it does not get, um, so nothing goes in the statement of cash flows. And when you add all those up, you should find that you get the numbers at the bottom. So that was, again, demonstration problem 10.2.